you know, I heard testimonies from my children even that it's been a rough week. It has been a rough week. There's a lot of things going on in our life that um, that's causing hurt, pain. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and our children are suffering also. Yeah. They're going through a hard time. Um, and we must Say must. 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 We must be able to understand and know where our help comes from. Amen. So with that being said, if you would turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17. And verse 37, just to uh, read one verse, because we're going to go back to verse 25 there. I just want to give the subject verse. Amen. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of thy hand, uh, out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. I just want to talk to you today about giant killers. <laughs> Giant killers, uh -huh. amen. And God has already told you who you are, mm -hmm. amen. And our life that we live is not a simple life, mm -hmm. amen. It's not a simple life. Mm -hmm. Even though we are who we are, we sometimes have problems in our life. Sooner or later, uh, we're going to be facing our giants, amen. 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 But a crisis doesn't make you, it just reveals who you are. Let me say that again. A crisis doesn't make you. It only reveals who you are. And nobody has achieved greatness without going through something, somewhere, or facing your giant somewhere. Amen? I hear the testimonies. I listen to what you say because, again, I know that you understand that when you go through something, it was God's grace that brought you this far. Amen? Amen? Our promised land is on the other side of giant land. Right. you got to go through the giants of your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Pastor Clark told us this morning in Sunday school, and I, I appreciate what God does. He already prepares us for the message. But giants are tools that God uses to prepare us for bigger things. Mm -hmm. Amen. But giant killers don't start out as giant killers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. We know David as a shepherd mm -hmm. and as a musician. Amen. First Samuel 17, verses 14 through 15. This is what, this is what, uh, this is how David got started. Amen. David, 14, said so he was the youngest, and the three elders followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep in Bethlehem. So David was a shepherd boy. Amen. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented themselves for 40 days. Amen? Amen. And so this giant, he just was out there, Goliath, was out there every day for 40 days, spewing out his anger, spewing out his, his disdain for God's people. Amen. We come on down, brother, brother James. 17. And Jesse said unto David, Amen. Uh, let me let me cause, I'm, cause I don't want to keep on turning my back there, but I'm gonna get it in my Bible. Jesse, where am I? Verse 17. Jesse said unto David, his son, take now for thy brethren an ephod of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And and so so David uh, was attending his father's seat. Amen. But things were about to change in his life. Now he didn't know it. Amen. The giant was there establishing himself, saying that I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that to you. And the devil is always trying to do something to you. But Jesse sent David to check on his brother. And you can read it as, as we go down. And he said, I want you to let me know how they're doing. They were supposed to be fighting against the Philistines. Amen. But when David got there, 
he saw Goliath stepping out, calling out the children of Israel. The devil is always trying you. How many have ever been tried? David. And he, David heard Goliath's defiance. And his defiance wasn't against David. It was against God. We ought to get angry when we know that the devil is dishonoring our God. Amen. Amen. And so when the Israelites saw the Goliath, they ran because they were afraid. So many times we don't want to face our giants because we don't know whether we can defeat them or not. But I'm here to tell you that the battle has already been fought and the victory has already been won. Amen. But David was doing what he was supposed to do, but the army was not. Amen. So giant killers see the potential reward if they defeat the giants. That's why 1 Samuel 17, 25, 25 to 27 say, what did they say? 25 to 27, and the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And they shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with what? Great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Amen? Amen. So, so, so David knew, or he heard them say that the king was going to give him great riches and his daughter and his father's house to be free. The army saw Goliath, but David saw God. Amen. Let me say that one more time. The army saw Goliath, but David saw God. The army saw the problem, but David saw the potential. The potential was that I'm going to have great riches. Amen. I'm going to have their wife. And my house, father's house is going to be free. So you can't look at your problem, you got to look at the potential. As to what? God, how many know that God is able? Yeah, God is able to do what? And so what is that again? No, 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 no. See, don't put the air wild in there. It, the Bible says exceeding abundantly above all of me. That's what thing. Amen. Exceeding abundantly. Exceeding abundantly. Go past abundantly. You see, exceedingly abundantly means that that's abundant. That's all he's able to do. But he's able to do exceeding abundantly. Yeah. Whatever you think God can do, he can do a whole lot more. Amen. Because the Bible said, First Corinthians, I believe, 2 and 9, say the Bible, you ain't got to go there because you got to stay right there. The Bible said, <laughs> he, eyes have not seen, neither ears have heard, Neither have entered into the heart of man the thing that God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. But the next verse is, but God <laughs> has revealed them unto us. Amen. He can reveal to us what he got for us. We just don't see the potential. We just don't see the potential because we don't look at God, we look at the circumstances. Why do you think folks say under the circumstances? You ain't got no business being under no circumstances. You the head and not the tail. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I didn't mean to go there. I didn't mean to go there. Right now, you go to heaven, I mean, so bad. You don't have any business being under no circumstances. The circumstances, you got the devil on your feet. Keep him there. Amen. Oh, Lord. Most men giants more than they seem to feel the reward. Amen. More than the reward. Amen. I know what you see is real, but it's not the reality. <laughs> Behind what you see is an all-powerful God. Yeah, Lord. Lord have mercy. What you see, what you what you don't see is that behind the scene is an all-powerful God. Yeah, and he's just waiting on you to trust him. Amen. Yeah. But giant killers don't listen to the doubting critics. Amen. Uh, but we got to learn how to help criticism. 1 Samuel 17, 28 through 30. David didn't do nothing, but his brother, Eliab, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled. Why did he get mad at David? Because all David did was ask a question. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? 
Lord said. You got to get past that, amen. amen. So he burned with anger. Why? Because all David did was ask a question. Amen. So he started asking some questions. Then he answered his own question. I know. Amen. Folks don't know nothing about you. They don't know what's in your heart. They don't know what God has delivered you from. Some of us have been in some holes in our life. But God delivered us from those holes. Amen. And you the only one can tell it. Amen. As the song said, you can't tell it. Let me tell it. I got to tell my own story. You can't tell it. Let me tell it what the Lord has done for me. I told y'all to read some of the Valerie's book. You would look at her now and you would believe. Why God is but only read that book because I read it. But I wasn't there. You weren't there when God delivered me from my mess. So all David did was turn to somebody else. Amen. He got his answer. But I know criticism hurts. Especially when it's questioned by Amen. When, 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 when they question your motives, criticism hurts when it's all the time, continually. Criticism hurts when it comes from people that, you, uh, that you've that been around for a long time. But giant killers get past the sorrows of life also. Amen. Because Saul was the king. 1 Samuel 17, 31 through 32, 33. Saul heard of what David said, so he sent for David. Amen. David said to Saul, I don't want you to lose heart. Amen. I don't go fight this Philistine. And Saul said, now, now, again, you got to get past your Saul. Saul said, you're not able because you're just a boy. They look at your youth. Amen. They, they, they said, Saul said, this man, he can fight men from his youth. But David was young in his youth. Why couldn't he be a man fighting from his youth? Amen. Amen. Why can't you fight even though you're young? Oh, God, that messed up. Y'all didn't get that, but that's all right. A critic points out what you can't do, what they don't do. I wouldn't take all that. Oh, Lord. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't take all that. You're going to take that as a whole lot more. Amen. Stuff going to happen in your life. And you're going to take it, amen, amen. If, you, if you believe in the Lord. Because God said they did it to the green tree. Yes. What's going to be done in the trial? The Bible says if any man be in Christ, yes. he's a new creature. But he said if you're in Christ, you shall yes. suffer persecution, yes. amen. Yes. First Samuel 17, 41 and through uh, 44 said, John's trying to put you down, amen, because he talked about David's youth. He said, you come to me with sticks. Amen. <laughs> that stick David had was his staff. Yeah. He didn't realize that the staff was used, amen, if a sheep was lost to reach and grab that sheep and bring it back. He didn't realize the staff was used to keep the enemy away. Amen. It didn't, he didn't realize the staff was used for him to lean on. Amen. So he was coming with what he had. Amen. You got to use what you got. You can't use something that somebody else got. You got to use what God has given to you. Amen. So John tried to put you down. He said, you come with me. It's a you to come with me and stitch. And he said, I'm going to feed you to the birds and, the, you, and, and to the beast. Amen? Amen. But John killers are not overwhelmed by the challenge. Hmm. Oh, Lord. <laughs> John killers are not overwhelmed by the challenge. When problems come in your life, it should not overwhelm you. Because behind you, or right beside you, or even in you, is an all-powerful God. Amen. And that's why the Bible says, I can do how many things? Oh. I can do some things. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I can do all things oh. through Christ that strengthened in me. Amen. Amen. But the, while the army was afraid and hiding, David was not overwhelmed. David had a passion for God to be honored, and, and, and he was mad for the way this giant was dishonoring his God. Oh, how many times we get mad when folks dishonor God? We get mad because they dishonor us. Yeah. But we got to learn how to get mad because they dishonor God. Right. Amen. Amen. John can remember what the Lord has done. Amen. First Samuel 17, 34 through 37. Amen. 
Now, it's up on the board, but I'm just going to elaborate a little bit. They remember what God had done. Amen. And he told them, what did he tell them? 34. He said, David said to Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. That's why the Bible said you overcome that devil by what? The words by the words of your testimony, Lord, not your life to the dead. Amen. And he lay him and, and that's why everybody ought to have a testimony. Yeah. The bear, and he took a lamb out of the flock, and I went after him. Mm -hmm. And I smote him and delivered in out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by the beard and smote him and slew him. And thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing that he had defied the orders of the living God. The reason he said uncircumcised because circumcision cuts away the flesh. He, said he was dealing in the flesh. He wasn't dealing in the spirit. He was dealing in the flesh. And that's why he called him uncircumcised. So could they remember what God had done? He had three times before. And so he can three times again. Jack killers don't try to be something they are not. Saul tried to make him be Saul. Saul tried to make David be Saul. First seven, first seven, 17, 38 through 40. Thank you, Brother Jay. And Saul on David with his armor and put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with the coat of mail. See, we got to understand that Saul was no little man. When Samuel saw Saul, he stood head and shoulders above everybody else. But he was the king sent that scared to go out there and fight this job. So his armor was too big for David. And David girded his sword up on his armor. And he was saying to go, you know, but he tried to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I can't go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them all. And what did he do? He took his staff. You got to use what you got. He took his staff in his hand, and he chose him, what? Five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them, oh, Lord have mercy, in his shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script, and he slammed it in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Lord, when you use, Brother Silas, what you got. Amen. So you can't use what I got. You got to use what you got. You got to know how to help your child yourself. Because God has given. That's why he gave. I told y'all. He gave one, five, one, four, one, two. And one, five, two, and one. Amen. And the one that didn't use what he had, he threw, he said, cast him out into all the darkness, but as we've been gnashing of teeth. You got to use what you got. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, so in a crisis, people will try to make you like them. You can't defeat your giants with flesh and weapons. You got to use what you have. Amen. Mm -hmm. You must have a higher purpose. Mm -hmm. So what's that purpose? First Samuel 17, 45 through 47. Then said David to the Philistine, You come to me with the sword and the spear and with the shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the arm of Israel, whom I have defied. This day will I deliver. Uh oh. Oh, 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 thank you. This day will the Lord yeah. deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowl of the air, and the wild beasts of the air, that oh, oh. all the air may know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. See, what you're doing is because you want folks to know that there's a God. See, when you don't do what you're supposed to do, use what you got, folks don't know it's God. They think it's you. It has to be about God. It can't be about us. It's got to be about God. Amen. So people must know that there's a God. People must know that it's not by sword or spear that the Lord saved. People must know the battle is the Lord. It's not ours. God said not by power. Not by might, but by my spirit. What? Said the Lord. And giant killers are eager to win. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, 17 and verse 48. Oh, 
And David put his hand in his bag and took this a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. Like a stone sunk in his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling of a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him, but that was no sword in David's hand. Amen. Therefore David ran, stood upon the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of the sheep thereof and slew him and cut off his head by with it. And when the Philistine saw the champion was dead, David began to run. Oh, have mercy. And the men of Israel, uh, those same war that was hiding in a friend. Yeah. I told you, you can see, if you do what you're supposed to do, you elevate folks around you. Right. Right. Uh, right. Uh, David got to God, gave David the victory, but they rejoiced in it. And the men of Israel and of Judah rose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until they come to the valley of the gates of Ekron, and, and, the, and the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way of Shuram, even unto death and to Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from taking the Philistines, and they spoiled that to you know what? They took everything they had. People will be taken to a higher level. They'll realize that if you did it, or God did it for you, They'll do it for them. Yes. Amen. 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 Say amen. So the same men who were afraid the past 40 days, some kind of way they got covered. <laughs> See, when you know somebody with you, <laughs> amen, when somebody do it, right. you can do it also. How do you know that God, if they did it for David, God will do it for you. Amen. amen. I know that if God did it for David, he'll do it for me. Amen. I'm not afraid. Amen. They were willing to fight him. And this is why Jesus died to kill him that had the power of death, and that's the devil. And the Bible said the last enemy that shall be destroyed is dead. And that's why the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 15, Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, death, where is thy sting? In other words, God took the sting out of death. We should not be afraid to tackle our enemy because that enemy of death, you God, God, God is not going to let you die. You belong to him. God said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You live in Christ Amen. so that you don't have to fall by the wayside. Amen. Trust what God has already done. Amen. Amen. Trust what God is doing Amen. in your midst. Trust those people that God put in your life and showed you and tell you, it's not about me. It's about the almighty God that is on my side. Amen. David said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I would have been swallowed up quick. But because of who God is, God is the one that brought me out. He's the one that delivered me. He's the one that come up out of that grave with all power on the heaven and earth in his hand. Amen. 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 I don't have to worry. I don't have to fret. Amen. Even though the folks that are talking about me, amen, they won't do nothing. But you the one got to let God do it through you. Amen. amen. That's why Paul says it's no longer me, but it's the Christ that's on the inside of me. Because the devil tried. How many know the devil want to kill you? Yeah. He want to kill you. You know why he want to kill you? He want to kill you while you're in your sin. Because yeah. he know that you, he's doomed to go to hell. And he wants you to go with him. But the Bible says hell is in law as itself. Get ready for folks who won't turn their life over to the Lord. But you got to learn how to turn your life over to the Lord. Trust what God has done in you. Trust that God got all power in heaven and earth in your hand, in his hand. Trust that he's going to bring you out. Trust that you already have been delivered. Trust that God made you where you are and gave you what he wants you to have. Amen. Amen. And now all you got to do is use what you got. Amen. Brother James used to tell us, I, I ain't never prayed. <laughs> but now he's standing up praying. Won't let nobody ever pray. He's standing up praying. Go ahead, Brother James. Keep on praying. Amen. 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 Some of you say, I can't do it. But you do it. You get up and go because that's what God called you to do. Amen. You put up with it because that's what God, God using that tool to prepare you for something greater. Amen. You got to stop looking at the problem, but look at the potential. David looked at the fact that I'm going to be rich. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Wow. I'm going to have me a wife. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I'm going to have me a wife. Yeah. And my father's house is going to be free. Yeah. Woo! Don't look at the 
and start trying to kill David then. Yeah. Yeah. But David, God used David to rock the victory. Amen. All because they were giving David the credit. Yeah. Amen. That's what that, that's why they tried to Saul trying to kill him. Because he was the king, he was scared and wouldn't go. Uh -huh. yeah. But when David cut his hair off and started walking through the city, the women started singing, Saul killed his thousand. Yeah. But David killed his ten thousand. Yeah. And Saul wanted that glory. Yeah. But the glory belongs to the Lord. Oh. Amen. Because God belongs to us. Amen. 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 Are we all on the same page? Yes, Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Tell Pastor Clark.